Greetings everyone. Time for a little update on my 10 gig uh, transverter project. So I've wrapped up assembling the uh, transverter board. Of course I started with the pipe cap filters, four of them, two on the receive branch, two on the transmit branch. I used uh, the same technique as I had done, which is to preheat the board on a heating plate and then use uh, just one wire of solder uh, sitting uh, on the perimeter against the board and then heat up with a heat gun until um, everything melts and then uh, remove the heat gun and then let it uh, solidify and then remove the board and let it cool down. Uh, temperature this time I put it 125 Celsius. Um, I figured that it was better because it took much less time to cool down after I removed the hot air. Uh, so I soldered the four uh, pipe caps in location and then in order to uh, make sure they were more or less centered on their target I scribed uh, the circles um, so it may not show but there's a scratch on the surface a little wider than uh, the pipe cap itself and um, it allowed me to center the pipe caps before I bring out the heat gun and that's the good thing is you can already preheat the board on the heating plate and do a final touch up of the positions looking carefully against the scratch uh, on the surface for the four pipe cap filters and then bring out the heat gun and heat it up. After that was done uh, I worked on soldering the nuts, the copper nuts and in order to do this you use a stainless steel screw um, I had pre-tapped the holes on the pipe caps so I could screw in the screw with a loose copper nut and then tighten the nut against the pipe because there's a thread on the pipe ceiling it really screws in and then you know then you tighten the copper nut this is a this one is not a copper nut okay it's a uh, nickel plated nut so it's not it's just used to tighten the thing but the one that's soldered on is a copper nut and uh, yeah just soldered with a very powerful soldering iron it's 120 watt soldering iron and uh, it worked very well and then once that's done you can bring in your uh, copper screw don't use your copper screw because it will solder it against already uh, on in place you don't want that use a stainless steel screw uh, and then remove your stainless steel screw and then use your copper screw for the, the final <laughs> assembly. Um, I want to save on money a little bit because I'm cheap. I'm using a, a regular nut here as opposed to a, a, a copper nut okay, to tighten the screw in place. And of course I uh, then uh, uh, inserted the probes in place. They're four millimeters above the PCB surface exactly. Uh, like I did on my trial pipe cap filter, use the same technique and it worked fine. So that was the pipe cap filters and then of course I started to assemble the components, all the surface mount components and that went well also. Um, always difficult to solder the um, MMIC amplifier ground leads to the ground plane. A little easier on this side but quite hard on that side even if you have a powerful soldering iron like 120 watt soldering iron you, you you need to put some flux there and you know move your your, your tip the solder soldering iron tip a lot in order to flow that solder and it looks ugly in the end but it is soldered down no problem so uh, i i uh, install all the resistors first then the capacitors then i install the mmic amplifiers and I finished it off with um, the, um, uh, the double balance mixer and finally the uh, SME connectors. And one thing I did uh, on the receive path only, not on the transmit path, but on the receive path because it's, because it's more critical as far as attenuation and noise, is I used some ATC ceramic capacitors, coupling caps on the single path, just to put all the odds on my side. On the transmit path I use regular NPO 5 picofarad capacitors 0805 everything is 0805 uh, here W1 the GHZ recommended using 0603 resistors for this resistive splitter between the transmit and receive path 
but I didn't have those. But he also mentioned in his text that it's likely 0805 will work as well. So I, I just put some 0805 resistors in terms of size. I didn't have any 0603 of 33 ohm. Okay, but uh, we'll give it a try. I'm pretty sure it's going to work fine. Here's a small uh, little trick that I developed to facilitate the installation of uh, SMA connectors on PCB edges, the type that you just solder on to the edge like this. Um, co the common connector you'll find on the market, and this is a high quality one with real gold plating, uh, the common one is designed for thicker PCB, so 1.6 millimeters, which is 62.5 mils. But these PCBs having a thicker uh, dielectric above the ground plane on the bottom side widen the 50 ohm traces to a point where it becomes like almost 100 tau wide and it's a little wide to deal with on small surface mount components. So most uh, designers and uh, uh, ham radio related stuff adopted the half thickness, which is 0.8 millimeter or uh, 31 uh, thou roughly uh, thick. But these more common connectors don't fit. Uh, the PCB is a little too thick. Yes, you can solder the top side on the track and then the two ground legs on the top side but you're left with a gap on the bottom side. So if you try to solder these legs on the bottom side, you're going to have issues. There's a big gap of 0.8 millimeters. So I said, how about I, I fill that gap with something of 0.8 millimeters thick and then solder uh, over it? And that's how I came up with uh, this little uh, trick. Reason why I think it's going to work well is when you look at the design of the uh, the 0.8 millimeter connector instead of 1.6 millimeter gap connector is uh, there are two designs but one of them is the lower leg the the one that should normally contact the bottom side of the PCB is just thicker it starts at the same place here but they made it thicker uh, to uh, fill uh, the gap basically another design has this leg moved upwards or closer to the top leg but I think just filling the gap on the wider connector will do the job fine as far as the single integrity. Uh, we all know that, of course, the ground plane here is important as far as uh, control impedances, but the top legs too are important. So definitely we should solder the top legs against the surface, the top surface, and then fill that void and then solder everything. And in order to do this, I used... Uh, some 0.8 millimeter wire. Yeah, it's actually 0.81 and it's AWG 20, so 20 gauge solid copper wire. What you do is you bend it in two and you, you crunch it together like a small piece like you can see here. I just basically bent it with pliers like this and then, uh, you know, I, I do it by hand but I use normally use pliers and then I crunch it even more together and then I cut it to length, the proper length to just as long as the leg and no more. And then you just slide it in. It will just fit with friction in the gap on the bottom side. And then you do this on both legs and then you solder like I did here on that PCB. You just solder. See, here's an, uh, here are two more connectors here. And that's it. The job is done. The, uh, the gap is bridged. And I think the results will be fine. So that's a little trick I wanted to share with you. Hope it's useful. I did not install a connector on the 2 meter, like 144 megahertz uh, IF port because I'm not sure how I'm going to interface with the outside world. So I just soldered down a little piece of coax cable for the for the tests. So that's that's done. Now I'm ready to put it to test. Let's give it a try. One pat at a time, of course. Time to test our transverter board, the W1 GHZ board. Now it's easier to start with the transmit side and uh, this is what I'm doing. I'm feeding the transmit side with plus 8 volts DC here. Uh, the receive side is unpowered, okay? That's a, this side. I look at the total current, it's about 160 milliamps, which makes sense. 
it should be between 50 and 60 milliamps per MMIC amplifier and when I probe each of the three resistors the, those are 10 ohm resistors on the 8 volt bus that feed power to each of the three MMIC amplifiers I see around 57 milliamps of current and it's within one milliamp the three amps so the three amps seem to be installed correctly and now here's what I feed I feed an LO signal around plus 5 dBm to the uh, double balance mixer that's at 10.224 gigahertz I also feed a 144 megahertz signal into here at 0 dBm as recommended by Paul W1GHZ and what I did is I tuned up the two pipe cap filters on the spectrum analyzer until I got the maximum out here at 10.368 our target transmit frequency so that works fine the translation between 10224 and 144 works perfectly well I see 10.368 so I feed 0 dBm here on 144 and I see 0 dBm output on 10.368 gigahertz I see a carrier and let's have a look at the spectrum analyzer screen so I'm looking at a 10 kilohertz span at 10.368 center frequency here and we see our output here it comes out at 0 dBm it's lower than what I would have liked Paul seemed to mention that the output uh, normally sits between plus 5 and plus 10 dBm so I'm at the minimum 5 dBm lower on the output that I would have liked it's not explained at this point I replaced one of the coupling capacitors on the output going to the connector on the output just to see if the regular cheap capacitor represents an attenuation and I put a very good ATC 5 picofarad capacitor instead so RF grade capacitor and no it made no difference and I definitely peaked the two pipe cap filters the bandpass filters and that's the maximum I get so the outcome is that I will have to add an extra amplification stage one extra MMIC amplifier I tried to increase the 0 dBm input at 144 by a couple of dBs just to see if it would translate onto the output and it does not translate linearly we see that pretty much the double balance mixer is at its limit and I also tried to crank up the LO signal and it did not really yield any improvement so it could be the filters that are not exactly like they should and they have more insertion loss it's a possibility but what's important here is that the single is clean like I mentioned this is a 10 kilohertz span and there's at least 50 dB here close by there's a little bump could be um, AC hum that leaks through but the floor starts at around 60 dB below the peak so that's a that's going to be a good output signal no problem now what about the LO leak through because we will see the LO signal on the output as well but here's what it looks like it's at least 10 20 30 34 dB down compared to the main signal so it's not great but for that type of application it will be okay and that's in line with what we should have expected I mean I could always add another filter centered on 10368 with the hope that the 10224 will be attenuated even more but I'll think about it but initially it's going to be all right for the tests and we will be sending this into an amplifier so we'll see what the output signal looks like and then decide based on that so in summary so far so good on the transmit side I will need an extra gain stage between this and the power amplifier because typically they want around plus 10 dBm so I'll need another stage of amplification but otherwise I'm in business now on to the receive side in the next video 7-3